Hey, what's up, guys? This is uh, number six podcast for Rewinds. We're here today with Brent Chapel. He is the Pacala youth guy, and we are really thankful that he's here on the show. Thank you, Brent, for everything that you do, man. No, thank awesome. you for having me. And I love being out there at youth with you, brother. Oh, no, BBS was a fun time, too. Dude, oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, Orange Team, we showed out, by the yes. way, winning the Spirit hey, Award. Exactly. Boom. That, a hey, orange juice, orange juice, yes. and, you know. We're you know, a fruit and a and juice. A ju- yep, yep. No, something like uh, no, that. We're a color and a we're fruit. A color and a fruit. Boom. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> Heck yeah, brother. So today we have a real spicy challenge that we're going to do. So while we are asking the questions uh, for our, you know, uh, Hope Grows message review for Rewind, uh, we have uh, some randomized, um, like, I guess, note cards that either say spicy question or cool question. So if it's a spicy question, we got some of the spiciest wings, some blazing wings that we're going to eat before we answer and ask a question. And if it's a cool question, then we get to drink our Dasani water. So wish us luck. Hope that we don't die on that. Uh, but it's, I think it'll be humorous for you guys. So maybe you want to watch. Uh, it might maybe intrigue uh, some people. <laughs> and yet, who, who came up with the idea? No other than my buddy Brent Chapel right here. <laughs> So. Well, no, I just, I, it, it's perfect, you know, being under pressure when you're going oh. through stressful situations Boom. and how much pressure you feel mm. when you're eating spicy wings. That so. was what the message was, yeah, man. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Hey, uh, <laughs> suffering produces perseverance. Hey, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. <Hope grows. laughs> well, guys, uh, I'm going to go ahead and read the verse that we were um, going over for this past week in the series. So Romans 5, 2 through 4 is what I'm going to read right here. So um, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance, character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So that is a really, really powerful Mm. message right there, guys. And we're going to go through some questions on that topic right now. And I'm about to pull the first card. Okay. Cross your fingers. I'm hoping that it is a cool question, but let's see. Oh, come on. No, let's Let's start with some fun. It's going to be spicy. Oh, it's wait. a cool question. Oh, Let's get it, baby. Yeah. Okay. On. So we get a little sip of water. Yeah. We're gonna. You're gonna regret this water. later because then that means there's more spice and less cool afterwards. Yeah, okay. I think you're right. Actually, I wish it kind of like they were like back and forth. Well, watch it just be three cool questions at the beginning. <sighs> Dude, <laughs> I'm about to pass out if we do that, bro. Uh. Mm. So first question. Uh, just question like what pressures are you dealing with right now in your life and i could say that i got a, i got a bunch of pressures right now you know pressure to perform is one pressure mm. to show people that you know i really love jesus i think is a pressure that i have because i'm in a new position as online director and i i want to go out and help a lot of people so i'm wondering if you're feeling the same thing being like a youth pastor and you probably have you know a lot of kids that are looking up to you the same way and like you don't want to make mistakes just like I don't want to make mistakes like yeah it's like you said it's the same type of pressure just a little bit you have to deal with everybody Mm -hmm. from almost any age with being online and they're behind a computer yeah me I get to deal with teenagers Mm -hmm. and we all know how teenagers can be I love them to death but we do know how they can be (laughs) and I get to deal with them on a weekly, um, sometimes uh, twice a week basis, every Wednesday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. Now, some of these, like who is our Bacala intern right now, Mm -hmm. John Hipkins, he Mm -hmm. was actually part of my first students. Love him. He's Mm -hmm. great. He's he's one of the Mm -hmm. rewards from this. But some of these pressures are when I have students like this, Mm -hmm. and over there at Bacala, we have one, um, Zeta Rogers. She, yeah. I've seen her blossom and serving mm-hmm. and helping with Hey Girl, Hey, and all. Mm-hmm. But as her leader, what will happen if I have a fault? If yeah. I, if pressures of trying yeah. to do too much, mm-hmm. 
live up to too much yeah. and everything right there and mm-hmm. what what my fault would do to that right. um ministries right. and then outside of ministries and i'm sure you have yeah. this type of um mm-hmm. issue because i know how busy you are yeah. with everything behind a camera mm-hmm. and now i'm behind turntables yeah. and i have a spray business right. and then i'm helping with this how yep. do i manage my time how do i make sure i get this done while i th- having this also on my plate and doing that while also protecting my capacity and everything like that. And so it's just, Mm -hmm. it's a lot of pressure. And luckily Matt Sprinkle actually um, recommended a book. I forgot the name of it because I just started, huh? Winning the War in Your Mind? I think so. I think that's the one. That's what we got a book club on on Thursday. Oh, okay. (laughs) So, but yes, um, it's a great book. Um, I just started it. So I'm really enjoying it and how in, um, how to protect your capacity, how to manage your time, how to not keep saying, how are you doing? Oh, I'm busy. I got this, this, and this, yeah. and this. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I just think a lot of today, uh, a lot of people will say their pressure is not enough time and, yeah. you know, if they're going to fail at what they're doing. Yeah, that's a, well, let's hope that we can help them with some of these words. Uh, yes, here, right amen. Here. So let's go on to question two then. So. Mm. Boom. All right, so what's everybody's money on? I'm going to say it's going to be cool two in a row. I hope not. I hope nah. it's spicy. Uh, dude. It, <laughs> I mixed these up. You saw me do that. It's a cool question. Cheers again. We're going to be in some pain at the end of this, y'all. You better hope cool is at the bottom of that list. This this is not good. <laughs> not good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going to make it. Wait. Pressure. Uh, yeah, perseverance. Exactly, you gonna persevere go. these? <laughs> well, get the water while we can. Exactly. Mm. Question two: In your opinion, what is the best way to see as much of God's glory, what God is doing, as possible? For me, I would say that I want. I have to look back at times when I've been struggling. And I've been in those moments where, like, wow, like, I don't know if I could get through this. Like, I journal. So by journaling, Mm. I can see in the past that exact feeling that I felt when I was in those moments where, like, hey, there's nothing that I can do myself to get me through this time because and I just had to give it to God. And somehow it worked out. Somehow I'm here. I don't know how. Like, I know, uh, you remember your wreck situation? Uh, in fact, I think we're coming up on three years this week. Dude, that had to be a situation where you were like that, right? Like, Yeah, it, uh, the wreck, not necessarily. Everything, once I got to the hospital, was extremely stressful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but For yes, sure. that, that was a stressful situation. Um, what mitigated that stressful situation was... Uh, I got good news very early on. I didn't have to sit there and worry, was I going to be able to walk? Was I going to lose some of my hand or was anything like I got great news, I think, within the first, like, two hours of being in the ER. So that that wasn't the problem. The stress was, all right, getting back on your feet. Right. So, Mm -hmm. um, but going back to the question of best way to look and see how God's plan is, it's kind of like what you said. Just remember when you were going through those stressful situations, looking Mm -hmm. back, how have you learned from there? Um, Another example that I've heard a lot of people use is how do you think a sword is made? Mm -hmm. A beautiful sword made. Mm -hmm. um, It's not just comes out that way. You got to put it in fire. You got to sit there and you got to beat it. Then you got to Mm -hmm. shape it. And it's got to go through so much pressure, so much pounding, so much just um, breaking down before it can be Mm -hmm. made into something beautiful. Mm -hmm. But I would say the best way to look at it is look at stained glass. Mm -hmm. Our views, you're up there and you're looking through one one little jagged session of that stained glass. And that is our views of what our life is and what everything is. Mm -hmm. What's God's view? God's view is back. And he can see all those jagged pieces fitting in for his perfect plan. We will never understand it. We may not even see all of it. Mm -hmm. But everything does come out for his glory, for his perfect plan. So there is comfort in that. Yeah. Isn't that amazing, dude? No. Like, yes. Everything that has happened in our life, like, it God's, it's God's plan. Like, he puts these, like, struggles in our life for a reason. 
for a specific purpose that we have, it's that's like amazing. So, mm-hmm. and when you think on that, like if you're going through any struggle and you're thinking on that, like, hey, I don't know why. I have no idea why. Like some things you might never find out the reason why, but God has ma- put a specific purpose for that pain and suffering that you've been going through. And I mean, it's, it's going to be for God's glory. Mm-hmm. So, And then sometimes it may be like five years later and then you're going through that same exact situation and you're like, oh, wait, I've been through this before. I know how to recognize it. I know how to deal with it. I know how to do it. Hey, God, thanks. Mm. <laughs> you- <laughs> <laughs> Thank <you>. Yep. <laughs> Oh. Question three. Okay. Here we go. Let's Moment of truth. Please be <laughs> spicy. I think everybody's ready to see us eat some spice. I think so. This is it's the time. Time for this. Guess what it is? Spice. Spicy. Hey, <laughs> here we go. Okay, here we go. Uh. It is time for a spicy wing. And I'm going to have a napkin ready as uh, well. Yep, and yeah, you might want to have one of these ready for as well. Go Let's ahead and get your ranch. Up. I'm yep, not going to yep, need yep, <laughs> Do you think, I, is it allowed for ranch? Do you think I should do uh, I Hey, do it, it's whatever you want to do when it comes to stuff like this. Again, I was just very happy that, uh, agree. Yeah, that you agreed to this. <laughs> Well, dude, I was so happy. I'm not much of a spicy guy either, dude. Like, it's, <laughs> it's legit. Like I dip everything in ranch. So, oh, okay. Um, but for the sake of this video and mm. potentially Ooh. more views, I'm gonna do it anyway. You can smell the heat. Oh gosh, this is gonna be painful. Here we go. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Let's do it. Hmm. Good. Um. Now the key is wait about 30 seconds. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I think I'm gonna feel it real soon. Oh god, this is gonna be bad. <laughs> this is gonna be really bad. Mm-mm. <laughs> Can you hear me chewing on the mic, guys? Thank you, Cam. I think the more I chew, the worse it gets. Mm-hmm. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh, this is gonna hurt. Oh. I'm going to ask a question quick. <laughs> go right three, ahead. I'll go first, too. How about that? In verse 3, the word suffering, how fitting, comes from a Greek root that means pressure. Oh, jeez. How have you seen suffering bring pressure into a person's life? Uh, well, I think it's kind of fitting that we got this question when we first hit the spice. So, How are you not dying right now? Oh, God. All right, hold on. Give me a sec. I want to clean up a little bit. Are you, oh, are, are you going to be okay? Maybe. Next one, I'm doing ranch with it. Okay. So the question was, uh, how have we seen suffering bring pressure into a person's life? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> you can go ahead and drink your water if you need to. We're going we're gonna to suffer. You're going to suffer through to it? To produce perseverance. Okay. <laughs> um, so... There, especially uh, in today's society as well, but all throughout mankind, anytime things get hard, anytime you're going through something, there's going to be pressures added on top of you. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had a friend just got let go, yeah. and they have a four-year-old child, and mm-hmm. the father signed the rights away, and... Mm-hmm. They're worried about how am I going to pay for the daycare? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? How am I going to, you know, provide for my child? And yeah. so all that stress is adding, adding, adding on top of it. And mm-hmm. the very big problem is that what, where do you run to? Yeah. What, what do you do during those times of the pressure when all that stress, how do you mitigate that stress in a healthy manner? Right. So I've seen people run to alcohol. I've seen people run to food. Yeah. I've seen people run to other um, things, websites, yeah. people, mm-hmm. the wrong crowd, the wrong. Mm-hmm. Th- it's just so much, so many things that that stress, if not um, handled properly, can actually make the pressure even worse. Yeah. But a lot of people are always um, run into the quick fix. Yeah. It's numbing. Mm-hmm. It's like Pastor Clay said this weekend. It's just like there's so many things that you can numb yourself, but it's not a long-term solution. 
it's short term. It's like the alcohol, the drugs, the, mm-hmm. the sex, the, all these things. Like, it's like, hey, yeah, it's going to make you feel happy for a little while, but is it the long term solution? Is it going to stop? I would say problem? it actually, um, it's a short term solution that turns into a long term problem. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, if not, yeah, if not handled correctly. You're right about that. Yeah, you can really get messed up in some alcohol and different things. Oh, like gosh, that. yes, yes, yes. yes. Oof, so, but, um, it, luckily, we also have a community who understands stuff like that. Yeah. And so I know, um, I think it's on Fridays, so don't hold me to this, but I know Salt and Light Church over there mm-hmm. um, by um, CCTC, they have a great CR program. I've heard a lot of great things by mm-hmm. them. I know a lot of people who went there and just heard and done so many things. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've actually had a few friends, close personal friends, who's been through stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They always, always have magnificent things. So yeah. that is a way to also mitigate that stress. Yeah. You don't have to go there because you're already down and broken. You can right. go there to make sure you don't get yeah. out stress. For sure. And then, again, there's always other things. Find your 3 a.m. friends. Yeah. When you and, need. yeah, find your 3 a.m. friends. <laughs> Talk with them. Go out for a walk. Mm-hmm. Just start figuring out how you can mitigate that stress in your life in a mm-hmm. healthy way so it's not going to make the pressures even worse. Yeah, I think like what you just said, I think that having a friend group, a guy, group <sighs> of guys or girls or your girl that can you can run to and like that are trying to be more like Jesus the same way that we are, if you have that as like uh, something to fall back on, to look to and just that, talk to this stuff about them, I think that it's also like a very important thing to have. So like my life group that I go to at 8 p.m. on Mondays with the young adults, like Mm -hmm. that's, those are people that I can trust like with problems and like bring it to the, and say like, hey, I'm going through this right now. Can you guys pray for me? Like I need some help. Or even my F3 group that I go to, uh, which is uh, Fitness Fellowship and Faith. Uh, It's like a workout group um, that we do Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. we have a circle of trust that we go to and we are able to talk about our different issues and struggles, pains, and bring it to the group. And by just having people to talk to about it, it makes a world of difference. And knowing Mm -hmm. also that we have a God that listens to us. Like he's a God of the universe and he hears everything we ask him. He hears it. So just knowing that is just amazing to Mm -hmm. me. And also in a previous question, knowing he has placed a struggle for our purpose, like for his purpose, you know, he put a purpose in us. And it's just, that's awesome. It just gives me so much more motivation and just outlook into the future. Yes. But uh, now let's go to question four. I was like, now be honest with me. Are you hoping for a cool? Because if it's a cool, that means you got two spicy afterwards. Dude, I think I'm just going to go for a, I really want a spicy again. Just get them out of get the way. Get out of the way. Like, just please. <laughs> like, because if it's a cool and then I have to look forward to this rough time that I'm about to have with the more spicy ones. Uh, so we all know how the last two questions are going to be. It's cool. It's a cool uh, question. <clears throat> well, at least I get some water now. You know, this is, this is just great. Just fabulous, people. Mm-hmm. All right, so be honest. How how was your first? Have you ever had these wings before? Never. How were they? How was it? It made me cry. Okay. Made my nose run a little bit. And uh, do you feel your lips a little tingly? Just a little bit. Okay. Just a little bit. What I tried to do is I tried to just put teeth on it. Ah, smart. And uh, I think it worked out all right. Um, I did have like a drumstick, so it was a little better to be able to do that with. Cause like, I'm not gonna lie. That's why I gave you two drumsticks. (laughs) clutch there you go that's what i'm talking about but i will take my opportunity to drink as much water as i can during this right here there you go but i'm gonna go ahead and ask this question uh so have you known someone who faced pressure or suffering and rejoiced and why did they um man uh that's pretty powerful um i don't know a lot of people who have now, Honestly. I think, because I was talking with my students about this on Sunday after the sermon, mm-hmm. and I think 
a lot of them were like, so when they say rejoice, are they sitting there and like, yay, I'm suffering. I yeah. just lost my house. Yay. Yeah. No, we're not talking about like doing a happy dance and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's um, important to let and, um, everybody know we're not, when we say rejoice, that's not what we're talking about. When mm -hmm. we say rejoice, it's giving praise to mm -hmm. God. Kind of like in the book of uh, Job. Mm hmm Mm -hmm. He lost all seven of his kids. He he lost his house. He lost his fields. He lost yeah. his fortune and everything. And what did he do? He immediately tur um, mm -hmm. tore off his garments mm -hmm. and then said, I came into this um, world naked. Mm -hmm. I will return to it naked. Everything belongs to God. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's the type of rejoicing, I think. Yeah. Um, now, I've had some people I've known who in the face of struggles and stress and pressure and everything just it was very hard to see that they were under pressure yeah. because um, there was a very, very um, good man who was here years ago. Any day you mm -hmm. asked him, how are you doing? Best day of my life. And mm -hmm. he could be going through some major stuff. Best day of life. You know why? Because mm -hmm. by the grace of God, he was here. Yeah. That's and I was, I was like, that is the type of mindset I think that a lot of people need to have because mm -hmm. if you're going through financial problems, well, mm -hmm. hey, do you have a job? Do yeah. you have a car? Okay. If you don't have all these things, do you, do, can you walk? Can you get up? Yeah. Because there's a lot of people in this world who can't even say they can get up out of bed by themselves. Right. And just there's a, a, just, just a lot of things to be thankful for, but we mm -hmm. have learned to just focus on the negative too much. Yeah. And so I think if we learn to focus more on the positives and everything that God has yeah. granted us, mm -hmm. then that is rejoicing. Yes. yes, I got in that horrible wreck. I lost the car. I broke my femur. Mm -hmm. I was in the hospital for a week. Mm -hmm. I have scars. I'll probably never be able to truly run again. And I'll, mm -hmm. I'm up and walking. Yeah. I, I, I didn't have any long-term, mm -hmm. truly long-term um, problem. So that's my, uh, me rejoicing in that. And during that, I was like, hey, I'm happy to be alive right now. Let's just yeah. keep moving on from there. Yeah, for sure. That's crazy to think about, isn't it, that like we can go through that. But if we have that mindset, then, hey, God's got us. Man. Mm -hmm. If we think of that, then we can still be happy through our suffering even. Like even when Paul's in jail, you know, he's in, he's about to – like potentially be hung or different things like that. Like he's, he's about to die, you know, and he has found the key to joy and it's mm. Jesus. And it's in Jesus. You could be in jail. You could be in pain. You could be in suffering and still know, like think on the good things, like think on the most high thoughts, you know, it's. And same can be said with Joseph. I think it's, um, it's Genesis 50. I think it's verse 20 when he said all the stuff that happened to him. Mm-hmm was for God's glory because God put him in those situations to be um, his brothers, to sell him into slavery. Then mm -hmm. he got into this power. Then guess what? He went right back down. Mm -hmm. But by the grace of God and everything, he mm -hmm. brought him back up and his brothers came and he was able to be put in a position to save God's people. And that's one of those like, uh, again, with that thing, like looking back then when he first got sold into slavery, mm -hmm. Yeah, you're looking at that one little thing. Gosh, mm -hmm. this is awful. What am I going to do? Mm -hmm. You're not taking a step back. All right, God, where are you, where are you taking me? What do you want me to do? Mm -hmm. uh, what it, and it ultimately, years down the road, worked out for everyone and to serve God's um, purpose. God's glory, brother. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. So let's go on to question five. Well, do we even have to... Uh, Open. I don't think we, think we have to open because all the... We know cool. what's going on. <laughs> we know what's coming. Spicy. Oh, what a surprise. Wow. All right, you want to go ahead and get your ranch ready? I think I'm going to need ranch legit. Like, this is this is a must-have. Uh, I'm going to get the ranch, the and also I am going to get my moist towelette ready <laughs> so that I don't, you know, damage the, uh, damage the questions. There you mm -hmm. go. But, man, let's just go for it. All right, you ready, my good sir? I say we do it. Let me open this moist towelette up real quick, and then we're going to get started with that spicy question. All right, here we go. All right, cheers, my friend. Cheers to you. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Hmm. This is my lunch, so I probably won't be hungry after these three wings. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Oh yeah, thank you for lunch, by the yeah. way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very welcome. No, I just realized I forgot to put ranch on that first bite. I was wondering. I was like, wow. Let's go. Yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. Way to per um persevere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's actually very good. Not painful at all. Psych. <laughs> 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 oh, you got me. This <laughs> oh, you, you go. got me in hell of peace. <clears throat> Does that count? Do I have to eat these other Oh, things? I'm going to let you count that for yourself. Do it. Okay. Last oh. question. I think we're on five. Yeah. What has God taught you through times of pressure and suffering? We've pretty much answered this question already. Well, yeah, I think we answered in it in a general aspect mm -hmm. um you got anything personally that you know that he's taught you through bro um let's just say this um i've learned that i could be going through something and not know what the result is um i could not want something to happen really badly mm -hmm. and then god still does it even though i don't want it to happen and somehow it could come out for the good because there's many of things like I wanted to be a professional baseball player whenever Ooh, I was. What position? I was, wanted to be a catcher. But, <gasps> uh, you know what? Hey, there you hey. go. <laughs> but, of course, that, that didn't work out. Um, I, apparently, I wasn't good enough. And I really I gave all of my effort to baseball for a period of time. But if I would have, you know, gone to the professionals, gone to, mm. you know, what I had wanted to do, what I had prayed for. I really prayed hard for it, too. It was something that, like, in high school was my dream. In college, it was my dream. And God did not give that to me. But now I look back and I see that, hey, I'm in a place that is way better than where I was, where I would have been. You know, like, being here being where I'm at where I can impact so many people and love so many people, like, I look back and I would have been miserable as a professional baseball player. Mm. Like, what I wanted, it was not what God, what God wanted for me. And I just trust God wholeheartedly now that, you know, even if I don't want something, even if I'm in the moment and I'm saying, like, God, this this is not where I want to be, like, I, I hey, he's going to make it for my good, for maybe not my potential good right now, uh, but he's going to make it for God's glory. And I just see it working in my life right now. And, hey, who kn who knows? All that time you may have used in baseball can probably come up again for you to reach out to some people mm -hmm. and you have that genuine, you know, connections and everything like that. So you never know. Yeah. I kind of had a little bit of the same situation. Um, I was uh, supposed to go to USC, Columbia, and the coach actually had me set up to um, walk on for long snapping. Mm -hmm. Just for that. I was like, all right, great. That's all I wanted. Let me go there. Let me have the opportunity. That'll be great. Senior night, boom, tore my ACL. Yeah. Everything's gone. Yep. And everything right there. No scholarship, no nothing. No, well, it, uh, yeah, no. Um, I still had my academic scholarship, but, you know, I was like, you know what? No. And I was like, I was mad for those first couple days. But then I was like, you know what? Things happen. If I sit here and cry about it, it's not going to change. My ACL is messed up. I was like, you know what? Let's just try something else. I was like, tell me where to go. And I actually ended up to the um, college that's on your shirt right now. FMU. Yep. There we go. And so because I went there, it was both a great and bad thing. Mm -hmm. um, got to make some actually good quality friends, and I still um, talk to them. But it was also, we'll just say, a big character development time mm -hmm. for me and mm -hmm. um everything right there and that that actually ended up leading me after that time there to here mm -hmm. so again if i had never torn my acl mm -hmm. i may have gone to usc mm -hmm. and who knows only god knows but yeah, yeah it, it could have been worse i could not be sitting here right now who mm -hmm. um so that that's what gives me hope with anything that I, you can sit there, like Pastor Clay always says, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. There you go. Yep. So, You're going to jumble Yeah, jumble. So <laughs> if that is the case, 
don't have so much pressure on yourself to make this plan and that plan and this has to work. If it doesn't work out, don't let the stress of it work not working out mm-hmm. ruin everything else you've done. Right. Because, mm-hmm. all right, maybe your plan only goes to 70%. All right, are you going to let 30% of something that did not work out ruin the rest of that 70%? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I think it's just very important for us to have faith yeah. and have hope yeah. and everything that God is doing. And again, we may not get the answers right mm-hmm. when we want them or maybe in the next month, a year or so, but mm-hmm. we will get what God knows what's best for us. I agree. I 100% agree. Because like when I look back at many things, many different things that happened in my life, just like things that you had talked about, it's just like, like, man, if that wouldn't have happened and what I wanted to happen mm-hmm. would have happened, I wouldn't be here. I might not have the faith that I have today. Mm. Like, I might not know Jesus. Mm-hmm. Who's to know if I would have had that answer, that prayer answered? Who's to know if I would have known him like I know him today? And that's really like the reward. Like, knowing Jesus now, that's the biggest gift that I could have ever asked for. It, and there's a sense of comfort in that. It's like mental fortitude. Mm-hmm. So, oof. And what's that old saying? Uh, thank God for unanswered prayers. Yeah. <laughs> Legit. Oh my gosh. You All right, right. You ready to wrap up this last question? Here. You mind by, if mind if I uh, draw this one? Let's Do see it. what we oh, get. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. We'll check it out. Mm-hmm. Oh, look. It's a. Co- I'm just playing. It's oh. spicy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Don't forget your ranch okay. this time. Here yeah, comes the last one. It. This one I'm going to need to dip, I think, because it's one of those like, um, it's one of those like two piece ones. Oh, yeah, yes. So I can't have the easy. Ooh, have you seen. Uh, that little TikTok where you can push down the wing like this. I've seen something like that, but I've never really tried it. I'm trying it. I'm going to do it. To make it like look like a drumstick. Oh, this isn't working as planned. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, I prayed that this would work, and it's just the prayer's not getting answered. <laughs> <laughs> hey, see? Hey, see? Producing uh, mm-hmm. perseverance here again. But guys, sixth wing. Sixth and final one. So enjoy our faces because this might be the last time you see us doing this. <laughs> um, I'm doing I'm doing the dipping ranch. All right, here we go. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. Mm-hmm. Mm. It is so much easier with ranch. That's a lot better. Thank you for ranch. Mm-hmm. This is just a great lunch, guys. <laughs> oh, I we I should do bring, it again. Yeah, I think I want to bring food to every one of these now. There you go. We could change the name to like Snack Time with <laughs> Ian Brent. And then, uh, hey, I'm down. If you want to do that, um, go ahead and comment that. Mm-hmm. What should we eat next week? Mm. Or what should uh, T and his guests eat next week? A solid, um, I'm always for Chick fil A. But, uh, see, I mean, I'm just not a chip like a... for guy. What? I know. Dude, I know. How? That's always been a thing. Um, no, see, I, all right, look, look, look. Nothing, no restaurant can compare with Chip Flay's customer service. Boom. Uh, there is no oh. doubt on that. And I'm not trying to say Chip Flay food is bad by no means. Mm-hmm. I just think it's a little overhyped. Okay, maybe. It is chicken. It's just chicken. How about I say? Personally, I'm a uh, Bojangles and Popeyes guy. We, may, we might just have to have a uh, a Cajun chicken. Oh. From or bring Popeyes. a spicy, bring one of each and see and which one is better. There you go. I think that's a good challenge. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. We can do food reviews too. I don't know if that's uh... a. <laughs> we post that on YouTube. <laughs> Ooh, that might be a thing. Hey, maybe. We'll All right, it. so what's our last question? Last question. How would you explain to someone the hope of Jesus that comes in suffering? Oh. Mm. Mm, mm. Well, so, man, I would say, like, what we had just said a second ago, like, me going through those sufferings, that those different things that I had struggled with, it grew my faith, man. Like, I can't believe how, it's hard to believe how far I've come from these, like, downfalls in my life that have happened, and I thought that I wasn't going to come through them, but... God brought me through them. 
So it was like you're at a point in which you can't do something. You can't do anything. I, I'm like looking to God like, hey, I need your help. And then he does it, and you're like, wow. Um, or he turns the situation around. Maybe he doesn't answer your prayer, but he answers it in like a different way. And it just, that, that has changed my life and given me the hope that I have, basically. <laughs> it's always hard to try to tell somebody in the middle of sometimes their worst situation, hey, just have faith in Jesus. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's easy to praise Jesus. It's easy yeah. to praise God when everything's going great. Yeah. But while you're on top of the mountain, but when you go down into that valley, mm -hmm. if we're all being real, how many of us are truly praising Jesus? Yeah. Thanking God that we're down in that valley. I so anybody does. Yeah, exactly. So and I would say finding hope or rejoicing and suffering is right on par with that other one that everybody says it's always so hard for them to do. Forgive thy enemy. Yeah. I think those two are probably the hardest for us as sinful humans mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. Because that means giving up control. Yeah. And uh, I think the best way to start looking at or what's helped me when I really to stop thinking so negatively, um, negative about this and try to start finding hope is, well, heck, if I never went through anything that was bad, any problem. Mm hmm would I truly be able to appreciate the good things, the blessings that God gave me? No, because then it would just be a norm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's just routine. Exactly. Like, hey, I keep getting these gifts. I don't need God anymore is what you might say. Mm -hmm. You know, if you keep thinking, you might think high and mighty about yourself too and say that, you know, this is all me. This is everything that I can do. Put my trust in me, you know, and that, that's a, Recipe for failure right there. Mm -hmm. That's a recipe for some oof, bad times, and you surely ain't going to go to heaven if you think like that. Mm. Um, to put it also a little bit more, you know, tangible for a few people, going to the gym, all right? You're suffering. You're so sore the next day, all right? After, because you are sore one day, or is that going to completely stop you from going to the gym? If you let it stop you, then guess what? Then, yes, you just let all that suffering win and everything. But, no, if you keep through that pressure and everything mm -hmm. you start seeing those results mm -hmm. yeah. and I think that's what it is in our faith as well we can't just pray one time hey God take care of this for me I mean if God wants it to be then yes he will take care of it but mm -hmm. we have to show faith throughout our life yeah for sure and by doing that, we build our spiritual discipline of being faithful. And by doing so, we start learning to have a more positive mindset about it and how to walk through the suffering and pressure a lot more maturely so mm -hmm. we don't fall into bad habits. And so that way we can be there for those friends or anybody else, friends, students, yeah. uh, fellow Congre um, member, church mm -hmm. member and everything. Yep. We can be there for him because we have stuck to staying and mm -hmm. um, persevering through all that pressure and suffering. That's right. Hey, I think that's a good way to end the, the podcast right there. <laughs> I think that's a pretty powerful message that we got right there. Amen. So, guys, I'm going to leave you guys with a challenge like, like we said, too. So I wrote this one down before. Um, just look back at the time in your life where something uh, didn't go as planned. That's the challenge. Mm. And remember how badly you wanted that thing. Like, how you wanted it so bad, just like I wanted professional baseball. Didn't happen for me. Um, remember, like, like I said, um, where you were and what you were thinking. Um, and now look at what I'm doing now um, and just be like, wow. Um, perspective. God put me here in this position. He calls, he may have put um, that struggle in my life for a purpose. Um, or, you know, if you're going through a struggle right now, I challenge you to have faith. I know it's like tough to go through these things and everybody goes through these different things in their life. But uh, I want you guys to have faith and know uh, that we're here for you and we're praying for you. And you have brothers in Christ right here that want to help you. So if you have a prayer request or anything like that, just shoot it out to us. 
and we'll help you. Uh, we'll do our best to pray for you and just think about you, and we're just here for you. Sometimes that's all people want to hear, too. It's like, they don't want to hear, like, oh, yeah, it's going to work out for your good. Sometimes people want, don't want to hear that. So, and what I would tell you that some people want to hear is just that we're here for you. And we know it's tough. It could be like a really bad situation for you right now, but we're just here for you. So whatever you're going through, just let us know, and we could do our best to just pray for you and just be there for you. Um, and, man, thank you so much, Brent, for doing this challenge with me. Hey, thank you for having, having me, and thank idea. you for agreeing to this challenge. Dude, I I swear, I... Um, so I wiped my face because it was sweating. Oh, no. And now you... my eyebrow <laughs> is on fire. Just imagine so... <laughs> if you were to rub your eyes right now. <laughs> I need to go like this and like that. But I'm afraid on the left side that, oh, my gosh, I think I just had it down my face. <laughs> Dude, my face on fire. But now I think I can drink water, thankfully. And... Thank you again for doing this with me, bro. Nah, thank like, you for having me. I think it was really cool. And, guys, send a comment to my man Brent over here. Thank him for showing up. Uh, he got a really cool story. So come and chat with him sometime at the Bacal campus. Come see us at use. Come volunteer. Uh, volunteering also helps me in my times of struggle as well. So uh, see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.